right, and then as soon as you can, we do that. Obviously, we've obscured the U board now. Red signal, and it says stop and await instructions, or in this case, until call forward. So when that, when the box post is unmanned, then the stop board's removed back That's into it. When the box. It's unmanned, box. it would look like that. And it's you for unmanned. And the, the train crew have the authority under the rules to pass that then at caution and proceed as far as this, uh, the block post or signal box and receive instructions and authority to proceed. So, so this is the frame key obviously which is unique to the location. You can use the token but obviously as Blockman we're only allowed to use the frame key. So that should unlock the frame, it should allow us to normalise the king lever. And then just for now we'll set the road uh, on there. Put number seven back to normal takes the FPL off. Reverse number six, which is there. Hello, young man. You want to touch the phone, I expect. Well, you come on in and do that, so I can get in your way. Good morning. Good morning. My name's Dave. This indicator behind us shows an L and an F and it tells the local crews here whether the frame is actually locked up or free. Um, obviously if it's locked up then they have to gain permission off the uh, control down at uh, the wharf to pass the block post. Um, but if it's showing an F as it is now, the frame is open and free. Um, and then they just wait the instructions of the block postman here. They want to come off the shed now, of course. So that bit you've already seen, but whilst they're uh, <laughs> we're finished testing the frame. Circumstances allow, obviously, you haven't always got time before movements overtake you, but uh, I like to test everything if I can. Now, the hand points down there, of course, are in state beyond st in their side of station limits, so they will stop and check those. Point one, which is co-acting one, number 14, then we can reverse 11, which is the, that's what we get. Better open so I said because we haven't actually opened yet, formally to wolf. section at uh, 9 10 and there's two screw coupled vehicles and they're propelling up the rally uh, however he said quarry to me but okay as long as he's told you <laughs> 
Oh, all right, then. All right. <laughs> okay. Indeed. Well, that's just the engineers, isn't it? Yes, okay. All right, I'll, I'll offer you the empty stock in a second, if that's okay. Thank you. So David, who's the controller, is also doing the platform inspector's job there. So he's doing two turns of duty at once, um, so he's quite a busy man. So sometimes a telephone call is a help just to explain things. So I'm going to offer the ECS on there to him, 221. The, you know, as things have moved to the more yes. um, sympathetic Welsh so it's TYWYN now on all the street signs, and of course that's the more sort of semi anglicised version TOWYN. You can see there's been some alterations. Just here, the word derailers there, which have now been taken away, and what we have is a set of hand points there, which are identified as 12 on there, but it's not, which is a spare lever now, of course, because that's a set of hand points down there, which you can see just at the end of the shed uh, yeah. wall down there. So at the end of the day, when the stock uh, is going to be put to bed, part of the blockman's job is to make sure the road is set here for either, it calls it number one or two road now, but they're always known as north or south road, the north being this one and the south being the far one, um, to make sure the road is set. And then of course he can give that assurance to the controller and they can confirm that to the guard and the train crew so that the guard doesn't, otherwise if there's no blockman, the guard has to stop just by uh, before the points there, and of course he has to bring the token down, unlock the frame, yep. and, and set the frame to put the stuff to bed. Which is why I've said I'll be back later on because it's horrible at the end of the day. You just want to go home, you've done your bit, you know. So uh, part of the blockman's job is to make sure the road is set north or west. Uh, sorry, west shed, north or south road, or the north shed, of course, because we've got stock coming off there today, and uh, confirm that down there so they can be assured that the road is set and they don't need to stop specially to uh, to check the road. The gates we've talked about, um, you know, they are normally the enunciator will go for up or down train in sufficient time that usually somebody from the shed will come out and work the gates as you saw me work them just a little while ago. A little indicator up there tells you which way the um, hand points down there, that lever, so you can see they're set for the north road still, they're still set for where the stock that came out, one of the guards in due yeah. course will go down and move those. Um, to uh, to the south road, I think, because I think the stock came off the north road. Um, but they normally work that between them. But um, when you come to put the stock away, part of making sure, because they're within station limits, <laughs> it falls to the blockman's responsibility to check those, yeah. even though they're not directly controlled from the lever frame um, per se. I think all this was, I believe, before my time was planned to be re-signalled, and they did get as far as erecting some colour light signals, and then it all fell by the wayside, I don't know, so it would have looked a bit like Abergenolwyn, if you've yes. seen that, which is Colour Lights at, uh, at one time, but it fell by the wayside, but the railway have bought, uh, this is called the Orchard, it's all the land behind here from the end of the house down to where the garden is for the house that you can just see by the bridge yeah. going there, so that's planned, maybe, uh, there are plans afoot anyway to develop that as a, a locomotive shed and a carriage shed, I think, down there, and leave that as a heritage site, as part of the heritage mm. um, of the railway and to make that a visitor centre because you can't take people in easily under 16 I think it is because obviously machines and all the rest of it so it means they have to stop work which is quite disruptive so if, if they, that could be left as a dedicated heritage bit you know people could sort of it could be all part of the visitor experience yeah. shall we say and the real work could then you know be done done here that's the idea. Well,
we're normally testing the frame. Obviously, we've already made sure that those points are locked by the FPL. FPL off. And we can see that the points at the east end have reversed. Put the FPL back on. And we can see it does work. I always like to make sure that the FPL does actually do what it's supposed to do. We've already tested six and seven several times, so the north shed now, which is the one just over here, FPL off. And you can see the points reverse. Because this is not a passenger route, of course the FPL won't go back on because it's not required. So this is a collapsing FPL 14. It locks the po uh, points for the loop at that end and also the west carriage shed points. So if we reverse 11, we can see that that's set for the loop. The FPL should come back on, and that should prevent the points from moving. Take the FPL back off, put that back to normal, and as we've just seen, we can then reverse for the west shed. And again, the FPL won't go on for those, because of course that's not a passenger move. And that's the frame all tested. And you can see as the token goes in obviously the needle goes back to line normal. So these are quite helpful because obviously if a token's out it'll go to either train going to or train coming from according to which end it's been took out and line normal effectively when the section is free and clear. East of the service train being offered now um, from Wharf. So we get free Wharf which we acknowledge because the line's clear to the clearing point. He should give us a little bing, a single bing like that confirms he's got it out of the instrument, which they don't do elsewhere, I don't think. So we know the line's clear to the clearing point because the clearing point is the down limit of shunt board, which is on the bridge face down there. You can barely see it. And the line has to be clear as far as the up stop board, which is, you saw me put that out before, Dominic. And then there is the safety overlap uh, ahead of that, which is the distance beyond the board as far as the down limit of sh uh, shunt board. And that gives us our safety margin, our acceptance overlap. Uh, and on that basis, we can accept the train because we've met the prescriptive requirements of the Sibley regs. So we've now accepted the train, 9.43. Book that up. Of the very short section sense, uh, sent, uh, distance. We can now offer that on once we've had his line clear and we've accepted that. So we'll offer that on to Bringlass. Bringlass will still be on auto operator because of course we haven't had 555. So as soon as we press the bell push we should get a bing back which indicates that it's given us a release and we should see the galvanometer sweep over and that should allow me to withdraw the token. It's a bit of a longer push than normal. And again I press one bing at the end and that will help set the instrument at the other end to effectively train online. whistle there which indicates it's an up train approach in the stop board. You get the answering pot from the locomotive to say he's seen the signal and acknowledged it. We now fold the flag away.
Bella's waiting for you. Yes, my order's away. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.